trains that run again. Bombed, sabotaged, blown up by the Nazis on the run, French railways are rebuilt by Allied engineers. On D-Day, following secret instructions, Marquis Patriots wrecked locomotives, derailed trains, and tore out many sections of the railway system not already buckled by Allied bombing. When they started to retreat, the Germans, as they always do, destroyed what they couldn't take with them. Twisted steel and broken stone are monuments to a defeated conqueror. Nazis burned their bridges behind them. Now, the French undo their own good work and help repair what the enemy laid waste. One by one, the rivers of France are crossed. Under the supervision of Army engineers, trained American salvage crews get on the job of rebuilding the railways. Working fast, these soldiers clear away the debris from dynamited bridges, swing new girders and supports into place. Nothing is thrown away that can possibly be used. The French understand how to make the most of what they have. From bolts and nuts to boxcars and locomotives, the work goes on. Brought from America, stored in England, and now shipped in this specially designed craft across the channel, these tank cars are ready to roll from the beachhead to the front. With them come locomotives to replace those the Nazis wrecked. Boxcar after boxcar, a supply train for the armies to the east. A salvage train follows, taking skilled repairmen further up the line. Each of these railway ties serves to bring supplies two feet closer to the front. Foot by foot, mile by mile, the ruined railways are restored. At last, the sections are complete and the switch is thrown. A soldier at the throttle, once again the fast trains thunder across France. More trains a day than the Germans ever ran. First priority goes to hospital trains carrying the wounded, allied or enemy, back from battle. Night and day these iron arteries of an army throb with life. Gas and oil for the tanks on the battlefront. Together, Frenchmen and Americans have done the job.